props because I got to see Kenny Dope in Orlando a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I believe it was. And Diamond, I got to meet you up in Atlanta for A3C a couple of years ago. So I, I appreciate you coming through basically our city. Um, just a quick thing for you, Diamond. Just wanted to let you know that maybe a few months ago, and, and this is just a quick funny story, is this, one of the local radio stations played Best Kept Secret. I couldn't remember the name of the song. I knew the song, I couldn't place it. And I kept, I called up, spoke to the DJ, and I kept asking him, what's the name of the song? Oh, it's Best Kept Secret. I'm like, dude, why are you messing with me? Why do you keep messing with me? That's all he kept saying, it's Best Kept Secret. Just relax, man. I'm like, no, 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 why are you playing with me? So, you know, your, your song was actually played, but, you know, we know the, the chorus in that song can't really be played. It's <laughs> all so good. Yeah. Um, basically, as DJs, or as, as guys that still produce, do you find it still hard to stay active within the community, the producer's community? You know, because you got all these new kids that are coming up, and sometimes they don't know their history. That's what bothers me. They just come in, they, you know, sometimes they even have a name from somebody that's old school that they have to be reminded. It's like, that name was previously used, you know. So, I mean, do you guys still find it hard at times, you know? I, I, I don't find it hard because 95% of your producers all started out as DJs. You know, whether it's Dr. Dre or... Timberland, Just Blaze, Premier, Pete Rock, I can go on and on. You know, we all we all start out as DJs. We all still selling beats. You know, it, like it goes hand in hand basically. So I don't, you know, I don't I personally I don't I don't see no pressure from it. It's like we we've been doing this. You know, the when we were DJs, the mixer was our sampler, so to say. You know what I mean? And that's why most producers start off as DJs. It's just a continuation of that. I also feel that it's separated into two. You got people who make beats and you got people who produce records. You know what I'm saying? Um, we come from a school of people that produce records. A lot of the, the people that do records now make beats. It's very different. You put that, that same person in the studio with an MC or a singer, they can't produce the song. They just made a hot beat. You know what I'm saying? So that separates, and you know what? If you listen to the music, you listen to the old stuff, and you listen to the new stuff, you can tell. You can tell who was in the studio or who emailed the, the beat over, and they, they sent their Pro Tools file through the mail and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And that's a major issue right now with music is we have the technology, we have, we're have we able to, to transfer this stuff back and forth, but what happened to the days of being in the same room with your boys and creating some classics? You know what I'm saying? And I'm, you know, when, when I did the Raekwon record, I was trying to get them there and like, yo, this is what we gotta do. You know what I'm saying? And people's schedules are crazy, so it, it's, it's, it's nuts, but you know, we got to do that, you know what I'm saying? And, and a lot more, and you're going to see the difference in the sound, you know what I'm saying? When I did my album with Rashid, it's in the studio, right there. We're cutting it, we got it on film, and you can see how it, it takes place and all that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, there's two sides of it. And just one more thing is, basically something that um, Premier actually said on one of their rec on one of his records, or Gangstar, basically regarding people violating, you know, regarding putting the samples out there. I mean, do you give some of the new, I guess you could call them new age DJs, you know, the ones that can go online and look for certain samples, I mean, do you give them a pass or do you kind of, you know, does that take away from them? Because, you know, as we know, you can go online, Discogs, there's quite a few websites that pretty much give you the samples and you can hunt them down and if it's available as an MP3, you know, I mean, if, How do you determine, I mean? If, if I was 16 or 17, you know, and, and um, just had a knowledge of, of, of music in my head, um, yeah, I would go on the internet and look for music, no question. I mean, I do it now. I know, I don't, it's just the time period you're, you're from. 
You know, just because I just because I can remember going to a record store and buying a 45, I wouldn't hate on um, you know somebody younger than me who never experienced that. You know, all he or she might know is is to go online for music. You know, so it's just it's just technology. So produce some producers, you know, really eclectic types um, feel a certain way about people who. I call it virtual digging, but I mean, you know, if, if 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 you can't find a record, if you can't find a physical copy, and you don't have two or three hundred dollars to buy the original, then yeah, download that shit. You know, and go in the studio and get busy. I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, when they played in the club, the female on the dance floor or the couple on the dance floor who's dancing to it, they're not sitting there going, "Damn, I wonder if he had, if, if he used the original." <laughs> That's just how I feel. So maybe we can do two more questions and then wrap it up. What do you think? Anybody? Got more questions? When you guys uh, started out uh, producing and making your records, was it the club play by the DJ? They got the exposure for you guys to take it to another level, let's say, like with a record label. Man, there was times that records were just on reel to reel and we used to play them in the club. Absolutely. You know, um, that's how, that was our acetate. That was our test. That was our way to see if a record was going to work or not. That was our way to see if it sounded right. You know what I'm saying? I remember, I got, I still have quarter inch reels with people's promos on it, you know, that people used to bring to the club to test. It was straight out the studio, right onto the reel at the club and you and you tested it. You know, um and, and there's a lot of records like that. Like I, I still have the Black Moon um joint like that. You know what I'm saying? That I got from nervous. You know, that they came right from the studio, right to the club, yo test it. Boom. And it was on and it worked. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was that was our way. There was a lot a lot of labels did that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of labels actually used to make acetates for DJs to test before it was even a promo copy of it. You know what I mean? They were acetates, which is a a, a lacquer record that you master off of just to, to listen to it, you know what I mean? Or or play it in the club. Um, basically the same thing Kenny said, you know, um, you know, what, what, what would take the place of an acetate now, I guess, would be something like um, Digiwax. It's the same concept. You just want to just get your music out to as many people as possible and have them play it in the club and just try to try to get the crowd's response to it. Um, that's about it. Um, I guess my question is, With the passing of James Yancey, there's been a flood of amazing producers. And I, I just wonder, um, like, who your favorite new producers would be. Like, self titled just released the 1990 Now, which was a throwback to the 90s sound, Buck Wild producing the whole thing. Um, but now we have producers like M Phases, Ill Mind, Slop Funk Dust, Della, um, Moo. Uh, I mean, S1, the list goes on and on, and there's just so many super producers, and I'm um, <laughs> Spinner, like, Kev Brown, and I just wonder if, are you guys familiar with these these cats, or... Oh, yeah, know, and definitely. Definitely, because, you know, I, I'm still a fan of the music. Yeah. You know, if, 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 I, if, if, I, if I hear something that touches me, you know, I'm going to read the credits at some point. Yeah. Make it my business, you know, so I'm, I'm still a fan of music. I, I guess my, the, the question is, do you feel, like, I know there's obviously the mainstream versus the underground, but do you do you think that the type of, like, the boom bap type sample music will ever reach that type of masses again? Because now the younger, the younger audience actually does love this dope classic hip-hop, the right. jazzy hip-hop. And not even the radio. I'm gonna tell you something. I was with Scratch, and we went to see Buster Rhymes in the studio about about five weeks ago. Your answer, 
the boom, his album is is ridiculous, and he's going there with it. One, let me tell you something. We were there probably two hours. He played like three albums worth of material, and everyone was better than the last one. It's amazing. And he busted his back. Like we've been wanting Buster to be Buster for a minute. He's coming back hard. So like, it's, like it's about, did it. Like you know, his album is. You know what I'm saying? Like Buster's, Buster's is coming with it this go around. Thank you, guys. Can I get a round of applause for our special guest? Here we go. Um, I also want to thank really quickly Linda, Chain, thank you so much guys for hosting this, putting everything together. Special thanks to the Red Bull, Tampa team, Kelly, Tori, everybody in infrastructure, everybody on the Wings team. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you guys. Um, if you guys like this, um, there's more of this where that came from. If you find yourselves in Miami next week, we got Ninth Wonder to Live Quality. Um, we're with a music conference on uh, March 10th. We'll give more information from these guys. Um, and to learn more about the Rebel Music Academy, also hit up Linda, hit up Chang. They can tell you how to apply to be a part of the two-week program in Tokyo <coughs> this year. So um, if you haven't had a chance to check out the computer, check out the handouts, um, make sure you do so. And thank you guys for coming out. Um, feel free to stay and ask a few more questions. But doors open next door at Zara at 9 o'clock. Yeah, I want to thank Rebel for putting us down as well and everybody on the team. Well, having this is dope. This is real dope. Thanks. Thank you. All right, let's go get busy.